Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Roseanne Kapana Hodge. And if you're new to me, I am somebody who's on a mission to change the way we view and treat children's mental health. And really, I'm all about giving parents solutions when their kids are struggling with behavior and mental health issues, little ones and big ones, because mental health issues today are often complex and parents don't know what to do. So going to talk about calm brain parenting hacks, right? So everything I do is about teaching parents that we have to calm our brain, right? Because when our kids are agitated, they're pretty ir irrational. Um, we've all experienced it. It's normal, but sometimes it's not normal. So we're going to talk more about it. If you're new to me also, you can join our Facebook community, Natural Parenting Solutions. It's an exclusive community. And you can go to drrosanne.com forward slash group. You know, really just a tribe of other parents who are looking for a way to help their parent, their kids, and be with other parents like myself, like you, who are really looking for solutions. So let's jump in. Let's dive in, as I always like to say. So you thought parenting was going to be fun, right? Who thought that? me. <laughs> and it can be. And there's times when we really have a good time, at least in the Hodge household. But when you have a child who is dysregulated, who, you know, has these difficulties, and we're going to talk about what is a dysregulated brain, you know, what's understimulated versus overstimulated, and what can we do, right? Where are some steps we can take. But when you have a child who's dysregulated, man, it's hard. Man, it's a strain on you, it's on a strain on your relationship with your child. It's a strain on friendships. Uh, and it's a, a strain on, you know, your relationship with teachers, extended family members, all kinds of things. It's hard. And feeling frightened and not knowing what to do really only put fuel on the fire, right? Um, and I've been there as a parent, even as somebody who is an expert, right? And what I want to do and everything that I do is stop that for people so that instead of, you know, coulda, woulda, shoulda, and I've tried this and I've tried that, I want you to start being proactive instead of reactive and really put resources into your hands. And so that's why I talk about a dysregulated brain. So let's talk about what happens in a dysregulated brain. So when a child's brain is not regulated, um, you're going to see a variety of behaviors, but ultimately when your child isn't hearing you correctly, um, they are irritated, they are not taking action. These are all big red flags that their brain is dysregulated and we're trying to get them to do higher level things, right? You know, play cooperatively with their sister. Um, turn in their assignment, uh, study for a test. These are higher level executive functioning skills. These are things that really require critical thinking, you know, putting, putting together all that you know and taking action on it independently. And it's really hard when your brain is dysregulated. So what is the behaviors, what are those behaviors that we're looking for? And so what's overstimulated versus understimulated? And what I like to think about in a brain, right? So our brain generally should be pretty regulated. There's times we're overstimulated, right? Um, today I had to take a totally different routine today because something happened and I had to run two errands before work. I never run errands before work, let alone two, okay? So I go to the pharmacy and pick something up and um, it was closed. And I was like, oh my God, I went out of my way. And I was like, it's going to be okay, Roseanne. You can go get it later, even though I don't want to because it's irritated. Now I've broken my routine twice. So you, you can get a little stimulated, but it's more about patterns. What are long-term patterns? Most of the time I'm regulated, right? I do things every single day, seven days a week, at least once a day. I do things to calm and support my nervous system. So what happens in terms of behaviors, right? Let's talk about internalizing versus externalizing behaviors because they fall along with an understimulated brain. Internalizers, externalizers tend to have 
overstimulated brains. You can have both, right? You can have a really anxious person with a with a brain that's overactive um, and they show shutdown behaviors. But most of the time when we think of understimulated, we think of, you know, having difficulty, you know, paying attention, listening, getting stuff done. You know, these are kids that are like, you know, they could be the mayor and yet never get anything done. Right. So I think that's part of it. And then overstimulated behaviors, we're thinking moody, worried in an agitated kind of way, sensory seeking behaviors um, and, you know, angry behaviors, big behaviors, big emotions, big, big reactions. I talked recently about rejection, sensitivity, dysphoria, kids that have huge emotional reactions um, for perceived or real sense of criticism or rejection. This is really common. So when we start thinking about the brain as acting a certain way, right? What am I going to tell you? We're going to not personalize the behavior. Um, it doesn't mean that we say, oh, they can't help themselves. No, instead, we're actually going to say the opposite. Science can show us what we can do to manage these behaviors. And, you know, in our Facebook group, I'm realizing more and more and more that people need like on the fly help with behaviors, right? Because we sign up as for parents. We thought it was going to be super fun. <laughs> um, I was sharing a personal story today. You know, like, what did I think parenting was going to be like, right? I thought parenting was like my kids were going to go to Montessori school down the street. Well, one of them did eventually go there. And, you know, it was just going to be easy and full of play dates. And, you know, and your kid was going to be just everything was going to be easy. Well, that's not what happened to either of my kids. And, you know, genetics are a part of that. You know, I got myself a little married into a dyslexic family. Um, it has, a they have a lot of gifts, okay, including the dyslexia. It's pretty awesome. But also, you know, I have a child that got Lyme disease and that altered his whole path. And so our path became altered. We don't, we didn't know what we knew, right? So many of us thought it was going to be fun. And again, it can be, we just have to stop being in this sprint mode. We have to prepare ourselves as a marathon. We have to take on family lifestyle changes and it gets easier and we have to address behaviors. There isn't a pill that fix behavior. Okay. There is only learning, new learning. You have to unlearn habits and relearn new habits. And we can do that. So Let's talk about how to approach a dysregulated kid, okay? So we know that there's internalizing behaviors. We know there's externalizing behaviors. Kids tend to have more of a propensity to both, but a lot of kids can have extremely dysregulated kids can easily show both, right? Kids that have um, shopping cart diagnoses, multiple diagnoses. You know, my PANS kids one day can be, you know, typical the next day they could be, you know, coming at you with knives, aka true story. And um, the, uh, the next day after that, they could not want to get out of bed. So it really depends on the infections. It depends on a lot of things. Um, in that case with PANS, right, toxins and infections affecting um, the, you know, the brain um, and behavior. But there's a lot of reasons why that could still be the same with somebody with OCD or depression or anxiety or even somebody with dyslexia, right? So, you know, I always talk about, you know, my, my dyslexic kid. Well, he's got a great emotional core, right? And that took a lot of work, lots of open discussion about it. He also got appropriate treatment right from the get-go. He never not had dyslexia reading instruction. So he didn't have the same kind of frustrations that my friend's kids have where, you know, they begged for help. And, you know, people would say, well, they're just so bright, you know, even my kid would have gotten help in the school because he was so extreme, you know, and I mean, couldn't even identify a letter until he was, you know, seven. And we just were like, okay, you know, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, but we're going to keep putting the intervention in there. Um, and that's the way his brain works. And boop, he got it. And it was like a light switch went off and then he went on to the next thing. So everyone's different you have to take action. So let's talk about hacks for um, behavior, right? So number one, the first thing nobody ever wants to do is put your own max oxygen mask on, right? Because when our kid is, you know, um, laying there, you know, ignoring you, not listening, yelling at you, all of these things that you're like, 
I can't believe this. I didn't sign up for this, right? We've all been there. Um, you've got to calm yourself. And the more you regulate yourself, the easier it is. And then just know that our children co-regulate off of us, right? That's a fancy way to say that energetically, when we are regulated, they will meet us where we're at, right? So the the more we can be like, oh, okay, yeah, you 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 just punch your brother in the face, you know? Hmm, okay, <laughs> right? And um, you're gonna have to go take a time out for that. We're we're not addressing that, right? Super super important. And you definitely don't want to meet your child with their anger. Certainly, safety is a different thing. I say this all the time. My kids know this. Is this a safety issue, right? We have to meet kids where they're at when it's related to safety. But the rest of the time, if they're angry, don't meet them with anger. It just is going to be a level up, right? Um, so number two, you're going to be picking one behavior and you're going to work on it, right? I know this sounds really elementary, but it also sounds frustrating for people because you're like, what do I do? How many behaviors? What's going on? I talk a lot about this in my... Um, Brain Behavior Reset, we have an executive functioning toolkit where I map it all out. But you have to pick one thing and you want to be smart about it. You want to be that parent detective, right? You want to say like, what's the one behavior that seems to be the driver of everything, right? Maybe it's when you say no, right? Maybe they can't cope. You've got to really figure that out. Most of the kids that are really dysregulated have very poor coping skills. Um, they don't know how to manage and tolerate uncomfortable sensations when they don't get what they want. And so that may be that one thing that you're starting on, right? Like supporting managing when you say no, supporting when you're listening, whatever it is, one thing, people, 30 days, okay? And what are you going to do in your 30 days, okay? You know what I'm going to say. We're going to reinforce, reinforce, and reinforce some more. We're going to reinforce desired behaviors, right? So ideally, we try to ignore things, right? So your kid's like, you know, the Hulk. Um, my One of my best girlfriends last night was like, I'm really having a hard time with the teenage behaviors. And I was like, I promise you will get better. Okay, number one. So before I say anything else, I promise you will get better. But I was like, you can't get into it with them, right? You can you can certainly be like, hey, I don't like how you're talking to me. And I'm over here if you want to talk to me, right? Um, I, you know, tell everybody, you know, the story that I tell everybody, we do Bruce Banner and the Hulk in our house. And I'm like, oh, sounds like uh, the Hulk showing up over here. And my kids now usually just laugh and that kind of thing. Or we're so annoying, Mr. Hodge and I, we're like, sounds like you need a hug. And we do a lot of like hugging when they can't stand us kind of stuff. And I find that to be like super a diffuser. That's organic to us. Um, and I find that when you're so tense, like my girlfriend was like, I feel like there's no joy in my house. And I was like, of course you do, because you had you did all these things, you you took your kid to you know, every sport known to man because she does um, and they're nasty to you. Of course, you didn't feel like you signed up for that. That's super important to validate that. But they're going through a lot of changes. They have a lot of stress within their body. And, you know, it's OK to say to them, listen, I love you, but I don't love this kind of thing over here. You know what I mean? Um, and even my easy kid, you know, he's 12. Like, I'm like, oh, is what's going on? Did a hair just sprout out of your underarm because you're being cranky? But my kids expect that from me. And I feel that humor is the greatest diffuser. So you're going to calm yourself. You're going to pick one behavior and you're going to reinforce the heck out of it. I mean, reinforce it, reinforce it, and reinforce it some more, build some self-confidence. This is a process. And you repeat, rinse and repeat, move on to the next. You're not going to fix everything by the one behavior, but you've got to stop the friction and we've got to help our kids and calm their brain. And everything you can do to calm your brain is super, super important. So if you're looking for resources, this is my parenting lifeline, you definitely need to go to our Facebook group. We're talking about this more and more and more. So drrosanne.com. And if you're looking for direct support, if you're like, Roseanne, praise the Lord, hallelujah, what can I do? 
I need guidance and help because when you have a child with a clinical issue, you're going to need help. You can apply to work with our, our program, uh, drrosanne.com forward slash apply. And we say apply because we want to make sure we can help you. We help the most complex cases, but it's not the issue that is the problem. It's the attitude to the issue. So we need partners. We need people who are like, give me the tools. I'm going to use them. This is what we're doing. <laughs> um, and, you know, change is always possible regardless of what's going on. And unfortunately, you know, I know a lot of people um, that who are really struggling. So I want to answer a couple of questions for people like so sleep. So um, when you have a child who doesn't sleep, you are not sleeping. Um, and I think this is so important, right? What can we do to support sleep? So, you know, I'm going to tell you that I want you to use magnesium. We got our um, multi-mag brain formula coming out in spring, late winter, spring of 2023, coming up soon. But uh, using an L3-N8, a glycinate combination, um, even other things, always check with your provider. I know I'm giving general advice, but magnesium is super, super safe. So look at your sleep hygiene. If you don't have my book, it's going to be okay. I have a whole sleep hygiene component in there. Um, but you've got to get yourself sleeping. You've got to get them sleeping. I am even cranky when I don't sleep, Okay. Everybody needs to sleep, okay? And then what can you do to self-regulate yourself? Super easy things. A four, a four, seven, eight breath is the go-to for me. You've got to breathe through it, but you've got to do it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. You're not going to do one set of breath work and your nervous system is like, wow, this is exactly where I need to be. It's like saying, you know, I'm um, only going to have Cheetos three times a day and I'm and but I'm cutting out one. OK, it just doesn't work. So try breath work. Try other nervous system calming things. You can use, you know, apps like Insight Timer for meditation. You can go to YouTube um, and meditation doesn't have to be total quietness, people. You can count backwards from 100 in your head. I learned that from um, some monks, which I think is pretty awesome. So I think that when you um, are, you know, really thinking about, um, you know, what you can do to calm yourself. It's really what you works for you. Some people it's daily prayer. I start my day with prayer. If I'm really at it, I light my candles. Um, and you know, it just sets the tone for my day. I feel much better. That is important to me. I'm not saying everybody needs to do that. You've got to find what works for you and you have to use it. Don't leave the treadmill in the basement, get on it. OK, so um, I hope this is helpful. We'll have more conversations about ways to calm nervous systems for mamas, papas and other caregivers and teachers, too. So many people here are teachers. Um, so wherever you are in the journey is exactly where you need to be. You just need to take that one step and be consistent about it. Sending everybody a lot of love and light.